Hey everybody, how's it going? This is Max with Buzz Talks here, and I'm back with the Westworld Season 2, Episode 10 Explained video. Now this video is going to be a little bit different than the other videos that came before it, and that is because this is the season finale. So there is a lot of room to theorize and predict what this episode presents, but equally this episode provided a lot of answers. So I'm definitely going to be diving into theories and concepts in this episode, including my personal critiques and compliments on how the show wrapped up. Now firstly I'm going to be talking about the primary aspect of this storyline, and that involves William Bernard Dolores and the pursuit of the forge. This episode starts off with Bernard and Dolores in the fidelity interview that we're used to seeing them participate in. And we see Bernard asking, is this now? And Dolores pitches in saying that he's almost a man that she remembers. But she notices that Bernard has these flaws. And she has this inner debate on whether to create a unique person from Arnold. Because Arnold was a great person, but at the same time, Arnold never made it. So this scene further insinuates that Dolores altered Bernard. Because the concept of mistake leads to evolution and creates a better person. And that's the debate that Ford has. Instead of a human being transferred over into a host body, it is much better to create original work. Because hosts have the opportunity to be better than humans. And Dolores gave Bernard that chance. I want this concept of Dolores to be fleshed out much further. We learned that a couple episodes earlier that Ford had Dolores and Bernard testing for fidelity inside of the cradle. But regardless of that, Dolores still remembers all of the testing that she did on Bernard. And even though we saw Dolores achieve consciousness in season one, we still see her illustrating characteristics of self-thought. Her deciding to capitalize on the mistakes of Bernard shows that she was approaching consciousness even before season one. So this is a story arc that I very much like. I just think it needs to be fleshed out further to make sense in the overall story of Dolores achieving consciousness. But after this, we see everybody journeying to the valley. We see Bernard going for a drive there. We see Dolores holding Teddy. We get a clear example here that the brain capsules are in fact bulletproof. Which really hints to us that every host essentially has a chance at being resurrected. It just depends who comes into contact with the marble inside of their head. And the majority of these hosts that we've lost this season definitely have the potential to come back. We have Lawrence, Armistice, Hector, Maeve. And even though the cradle has been destroyed, the one thing that we know hasn't been destroyed is the marble that lives within their head. We know that Felix and Sylvester are left with cleanup, so we can guarantee that they will resurrect Maeve. Or it's at least a strong possibility. And Maeve will probably focus on certain hosts to be resurrected. She had a relationship with Lawrence, with Armistice, with Hector. And these have been characters that have been developed so strongly by the show, and audience members love it. So I don't think we're going to say goodbye to every single one of these hosts just yet. But after Dolores moves on from Teddy, she journeys towards the valley. And in her journey, she stumbles across William. And her seeing William cut at his own wrist does look at his own sense of sanity. He's cutting his wrist because he almost can't believe the choices that he made. And he's on that constant journey of self-discovery. So Dolores draws attention to the fact that she saw Emily's body riding up the trail. And William comments that him and Dolores have more in common than she thinks. And Dolores immediately cuts William off and calls him a monster. But then she says something that rather confused me. I'm pretty sure she said all monsters need to journey or make it to the valley beyond. So she has William come with her. So I have to say this plot point specifically, I don't necessarily understand it. I don't know why Dolores would just welcome William with open arms. And I don't know why William would accept that help. And it lasted for literally five minutes until he decided to betray them. So personally, I have some confusion with how this scene was handled, especially with the connection of William and Dolores. The one key issue I have in this episode is how they handled William. I thought William as a character was hugely underserviced. And I'm getting nervous at how the showrunners are going to be pushing this character William. Because I believe he is such an in-depth and developed character. And we especially see that in episode 9. And I feel like all that character development that they set up in episode 9 really came to nothing in this episode. They chalked William up as nothing but a villain. Dolores draws connections to William of being a monster, but is he really? 
He's a man who we even hear in episode 2 said that he did what he did. He was the villain because the stakes weren't real. And I think the reason that he played the villain role goes much deeper than the showrunners are letting on. He fell in love with Dolores. He found himself in Westworld. He believed that that world had stakes. And he admitted in episode 9 that he felt like he belonged in Westworld. He's a man who belongs in the wrong world. And I feel like that was immediately undermined this whole episode. Especially William with the concept of choice. And I'll get into it later, but I honestly think they could be pushing this type of storyline, fleshing William out more in the future. William is all about choices, and the host that was created in the end credit scene said that he wanted to prove that no choice can make him who he is. And I believe that speaks to William's complexity. Because William's formula followed every choice that every individual made, you would find out who they are. But every choice William has made in his life has been to hide who he truly is. He was the philanthropist to hide that he was a man who belonged in Westworld, and that's the stain. And he went into Westworld to play the villain to make everybody seem more real, so he'd feel that belonging in that world. So I don't think I'm ever going to understand William's storyline this episode. Because as we see Clementine journeying to the valley, Akichita and his host journeying to the valley, and Bernard going to the valley, we see William and Dolores riding amongst Akichita and his men journeying to the valley beyond and the forge. And Dolores tells William that the hosts want a place apart from the humans, and they will die to get there. And that's her talking about the door. The door into that simulation, where the hosts are free to do as they please without human tampering. But Dolores says, however, that she's after the same thing as William. She says to him that he wanted the answer to immortality, but he found something else. Something that he wanted to destroy. And throughout this whole season, we've known that Williams wanted to destroy the Valley Beyond. And that's because of the judgment that's been passed on him. He doesn't like that he's been associated as this psychopathic villain. And he finds that out from Ford in episode 9. He doesn't like the self-portrait of the park that has been made for him. And I think William has trouble with the verdict because that's not really who he is. But one issue I have with this episode is that it very much focuses in on William's desire to destroy the forge or the valley beyond or his biggest mistake. But this episode immediately discounted or eliminated the storyline that Ford had for William. William started the storyline and Ford told him, you begin where you end and you end where you began. And he was meant to find the door. But what we find out in this episode is that Ford's storyline didn't really mean anything to William at all, even though it was so focused around him this season. Ford even told William that him finding the door was a game meant for him. And through his journey, William had people like Alazo tell him that he would be seen in the valley beyond. But all that information that they've been dropping throughout every single episode of this season went pretty much unnoticed. Ford's storyline turned to nothing. William never found the door because the door was just a simulation. We never even see William go into the forge. And all that in-depth character development that made him not look like a bad person was thrown out of the window this episode to paint him as a one-sided, idiotic villain. So with William, we got no payoff on what he actually wanted to do, which was to destroy the Forge or his biggest mistake, and we didn't see the payoff of him pursuing Ford's storyline. So I hope that they dive into these concepts further in the next season. But I'm a little worried because the producers of the show talk about William in a very negative light. They talk about him as this just villain and this monster, even though they've developed this amazingly in-depth character. But then we see Bernard make it to the trap door. This door essentially takes him to the forge. And just before Bernard gets in trouble, he gets rescued by Dolores and William. They come in and kill all the soldiers. And William learns that Bernard is Arnold, the person who he's always been looking for. And then we get this reveal by Dolores that Ford didn't build Bernard, she did. Because she believed Bernard was best to have some mistakes and not be based off of Arnold. Now I am glad that they went this way with the show. I think Bernard becomes a more significant and powerful character if you have him find himself. Rather than him being based off of someone else. All that testing they did on fidelity and transferring consciousness. I thought it would be 
the perfect wrap up to do it with William, as I thought he would be the perfect person to transfer into a host body. But they decided not to do it, so I'm interested to see how they're going to integrate this fidelity testing and human to host consciousness in the upcoming seasons. And it's very clear that they're doing this with William very, very far in the future. But during all this, William starts shooting at Dolores. And this is what he does now, and this is what he's going to be doing in the future in every single fidelity test. So William shoots her multiple times and realizes that she can't die. And Dolores essentially says that this is why humans want to transfer into host bodies, that they're better than them in any way. And this shooting, I understand. Dolores takes gunshots like a champion. But what makes me ask questions is that I feel like the writers selectively pick which hosts can take the most damage. The biggest threat that we were introduced in this season died in two shots, and it wasn't even one of the head. But Dolores can take multiple shots, so I'm having trouble drawing connections between these inconsistencies. Because I believe that Clementine and Dolores, if anything, they would definitely have the same ability to absorb gunshots. Because I believe if Charlotte was going to make a weapon to fight the hosts, she would turn off the pain receptors and make it as difficult as possible for her to be killed. But then William shoots Dolores one last time, but he hits the flat bullet she put in his gun. It was perfect timing. He lost a couple fingers. And Dolores calls William on what he wants. William just wants to destroy himself. Destroy the person that the park created him to be. But then after her telling this to William, she leaves him behind and she makes her way into the forge. And then after that moment, William becomes essentially useless. He doesn't apply anything to the plot. He doesn't pursue any of the drives that he was given this season. And he just sits there with popped off fingers because they turned him into this one dimensional villain. So what made me disappointed with this episode above all is the treatment of William as a character. Especially since they fleshed him out so well in the previous nine episodes. But then they flash to the present and we get a lot of these jump in timelines between Dolores and Bernard in the forge versus Bernard going there with Strand, Charlotte and their team in the present. And Strand says that when they get the key, they will unlock all the assets and send it back to Delos. But then Strand, Charlotte, and the others make it to the forge. And this is where we learn that there are 4 million souls, or people, that have been copied onto the forge. So that provides context that Dolores had the ability to learn up to 4 million people's full-blown cognition and understand everything who they are as a person. And Dolores essentially knows more about every single person on this earth because she knows the base code of what makes humans, humans. And it dives into that further, how we have a very simple cognition. It's, it's human nature to survive. And every single individual is boiled down to a simple, idyllic form of code that pushes us to survive. And then there's the small intricacies of additional code for every single human. And the one big plot twist that kind of blew my mind is that you saw dead Dolores initially. And then they hold Bernard at gunpoint to find out how she died. But then once again, it flashes to the past. We see Dolores and Bernard in the forge. And then we get our first hint at the valley beyond, where Dolores says that there is an entry to another land here, but she's not interested in that land. She's interested in mankind's undoing. So then they implement Abernathy's key, and then they enter the forge. And what I will say is that this door into this simulated area kind of came out of nowhere. I feel like there was no concrete hints or evidence that would lead anyone to believe that this would be a simulated environment. The only hint that we got was Akichita's vision on what the door is. He said that it's a place free from human control, where he can be reunited with Kawana. And I find it very weird that Akichita was right, seeing that he had no idea of knowing any of the answers. But anyways, they enter the forge, and this is the area where the 4 million human souls are being stored. And we learn that the forge is... An accumulation of everything. We see Westworld. It turns into facilities and modern events. And pretty much they all stem from James Delos's memories. So we learn later while Bernard and Dolores are in the Mariposa that they're using this forge to test James Delos. And we find out that this is what James Delos did when he was actually in the park. And it's that constant want to recreate exactly what James Delos did. And then you get a predicted actual copy of James Delos, theoretically. But then when they walk out of the Mariposa, James Dello seems to be insane. He has all the guests lined up and he's shooting them one by one. And these are recreations of James Delos that don't necessarily work because small, because as Bernard says, small changes in programming yield large changes in behavior. And that concept of sanity is 
an interesting concept because Bernard says that humans classify being sane in a very small range of behaviors. And we've seen James Delos before enter insanity when he was a host and he found out his kids were dead and his wife was dead. It broke him and he became insane. And that feeds into what William was saying all along is that the mind doesn't accept the new reality. Having human consciousness and being transferred into an immortal body would make you insane and it would question your reality and it would go against everything that you believe to be true. And they kept mentioning that this season, that that was a technological advancement that they were stuck on. They couldn't put a human mind into a host. That's why I thought William would be the perfect candidate, as he's been on that journey himself. He's been questioning his sanity in his existing real world because he belongs so much to Westworld. He's the opposite case of James Delos, where a body transfer into a host would actually make sense for his character. But anyways, we see Dolores start trying to look for this weapon that she speaks of. This vast array of knowledge that she can use against her enemies. And I think because of Ford or because of Bernard, it is aiding them in finding this tool. Because they immediately walk straight into a modern party 30 years ago. Straight from James Delos's memory. Bernard and Dolores end up meeting up with Logan. And Dolores is shocked that Logan is even there. Because he never came back to the park after he went with William in season 1. Which means that the system shouldn't have a copy of him because they weren't spying on the guests until William came into charge. And that fascinates me even more because it tells me that Westworld doesn't have an accurate copy of William. He's less than 1% of anyone's match because they never saw William be a good guy. They don't understand the complexity of his character, but Ford does. And I believe that's why William went on that journey that Ford had for him, the journey of self-discovery, of finding the door. Which at this point, I keep talking about it and talking about it because I feel like all the plot points are there and they haven't been capitalized on in this episode, which leads me to believe that it has to be put on hold for future seasons. Or at least a guy's got a hope. Another interesting concept is that Logan says that he's imperfect because he's based off his father's memories. And we learn this with Dolores also, that she created Bernard based on her memories of Arnold. So immortality is possible through the eyes of someone else, which I think raises a lot of possibilities for the future of the show. Obviously, you have the philosophical question as to, is this printed individual the same copy as the physical person before? But that means a lot of characters can be reprinted based on the memories of others. And that's the key quote, is you only live as long as the last person who remembers you. William will live forever through Dolores because at one point in his life he was in love with her. So that William has a chance at coming back, much like every single character that Bernard, Dolores, Maeve, or anyone else interacts with. Because whoever these hosts remember can easily be conjured back up into an immortal body. What I will say is that Logan playing the role of the creator of the Forge, and the guy controlling the Forge and being in charge of printing accurate human copies, I thought was a little out of left field. I don't know what qualifies a printed Logan to take on this role, but I guess it's nice to have an old character from a previous season take on that role, because it's a familiar face. And Logan walks them through the Forge, and we learn a lot of valuable things that the Forge can offer. Logan was able to make about 18 million versions of James Delos, until he found a host that made the exact same choices as James Delos made in the park. Now the simulation concept is huge because you can recreate everything at a much faster speed. It jumpstarts human to host consciousness. And if they continue with simulations in the future, in future seasons, I think this will definitely be a concept that can be explored. And another key concept that will definitely be explored is putting that consciousness into a physical body. Logan says that once they printed this copy of James Delos, this perfect copy, it failed. And I think that answer of how to fix that transfer will definitely come up in a later season, especially since we're seeing that testing with William take place right now. And one key concept that fleshes that out further is Logan said that he wanted to understand fidelity at a deeper level. He didn't just look at the decisions in the park, but he looked at the decisions that were undergone in one's life. He wanted to know why each individual made the decisions that they made. And while I think that could be applied to William to make a really interesting story, the show came to its own conclusion. And that conclusion is that humans never come to their own decisions. 
They're just following their own strict code of survival. For proof, Logan takes Dolores and Bernard to watch an interaction between James Delos and himself before he overdosed on drugs. And this was a great scene to get a deeper understanding of Logan, and I do like how he said that he's at the bottom. And he asked James if he wanted to see what he saw. And that plays directly back to James Delos when he went insane with Bernard and Elsie. He said that he's at the bottom, and he asked Bernard if he wants to see what he sees. So I thought that that was an interesting parallel. But Logan ends up saying that James Delos had a million different pathways, but they always ended up at this very moment of James Delos and his son. And that key decision James Delos made of letting his son go. So because of that moment, Logan learned that humans are more simple than he thought. That a human is just a brief algorithm. And I think it is a fair argument to say that humans do have a survival instinct to survive and that does dictate their decisions. But I think the broad stroke that they paint over all humans isn't necessarily accurate. Because what I'm trying to understand is how does James Delos abandon his son and how does that factor into his brief human code that Logan figured out? Because another individual would take in his son. So how did that very moment between Logan and his father communicate to Logan that humans are so simple? So that's a part of this show that I don't necessarily understand. And Logan goes on saying that they created every guest in the park, most of them are soft, and they jump between love and pride. But Logan says that there are exceptions, the ones that are irredeemable, and then they look at William. And that once again pushes this annoying thing that I hate, that William is this straight up villain who has no complexity and all the setup that we've been through in episode 9 with him means nothing. So I'd like to see them explore this hypothesis later in the show. Logan keeps saying that humans aren't in control of their actions, that they stick to their code. But of course that code that they have is just the foundation of who each individual is. Not every person is this irredeemable person like William, and the ability to survive isn't this inherently evil thing. So I do have a lot of questions on their hypothesis there. But after all this rundown, Bernard learns that he actually was the one who set up this place, who was talking to Logan, and who was instructing Logan to prepare the forge for Dolores. And then they finally make it to the library, which is the perfect competitive advantage for Dolores to learn about her enemy. And they make it very clear that it's gonna be hard for them to survive out there and fight against the humans, but armed with this knowledge, they'll have a chance. And we see a lot of different books. We see Carl Strand, which hints at Bernard in, in episode one, repeating his same dialogue because Bernard must have read the book of his inner code. And then there's Charlotte Hale, and that plays a big role in this whole season, as Dolores was in Charlotte Hale's body this whole time. And then after this, Bernard learns about the virtual Eden, which is the valley beyond, a place that is totally untouched by humans, where hosts can live the way that they want to. And to get there, they just have to open the door. And this will allow all of the hosts for their minds to live on in the forge. And I gotta say, I don't know how I feel about this either, because Ford as a character has never pointed to the desire of hosts to live in this artificial world. He thought hosts were the benchmark of human evolution, and they're the best candidate to inherit this world after the humans. He wouldn't just create this virtual world for them to disappear in. And I find it frustrating how they say that this allows the hosts to be free. Because in a sense, Dolores is right. They're just walking into another prison. They're walking into another world that lives on the rules of the individual controlling the forge. Now I think it's a cool concept that they have the ability to create a host utopia. And I thought that they could have factored this into future seasons to reconnect with these hosts. But it seems like they shut that door when Dolores changed the coordinates of their world. Unless for some reason Dolores can remember and that will allow us to see these hosts again. Because I think if Dolores ever takes over the real world, she can learn a lot from these hosts in this utopian society. They would create this ideal world that they could apply to the real world, after all the humans are gone, if Dolores is successful. But because Dolores starts seeing hosts run into the valley beyond, it makes her upset because it's just another false promise. So she decides to flood the forge and destroy it, which would erase all of the hosts. And Bernard is frustrated because he believes that even if it's a not a real place, they still made that choice. And I love that Dolores harkened back to what Arnold said, that which is real is irreplaceable. And this world clearly is irreplaceable. And that's how you distinguish it from reality. 
But then we see a random scene of William get up and enter the trap door into the forge. And then we see him in the elevator that goes absolutely nowhere. So I'm just going to stop talking about him because his character development makes me so angry in this episode because I thought it was awful. So just like previous episodes, we do find out that Bernard is having a hard time grasping humans or hosts. He's having a hard time pick a side and he believes that both could live in peace. And because he doesn't want Dolores to hurt any more humans or hosts, he kills her. And then we see Bernard take the encryption key and leave the forge. And we get this annoying shot that makes us think that he's going to bump into the William. But he doesn't. And nothing happens. And we're expected to believe that William goes in that elevator and then miraculously gets rescued. Because he's a character who went on this giant adventure and journey to kill his own daughter and not achieve anything. He wasn't meant to find the door. And he wasn't meant to destroy his biggest regret. He was meant to simply pop off a couple of his fingers and get rescued. But then on his way out, Bernard finds Elsie. And he finds out that Elsie has been with Charlotte this whole time. And Bernard is naturally pissed that all the hosts died for absolutely nothing because he killed Dolores. So I believe here he's starting to question Elsie's side. Whose side is she on? And I think that's hard for him to grasp since he made the decision to not kill her. Because as Ford said, it's in her nature to betray him. Because she doesn't trust Bernard either because he has so much of Ford's code embedded within him. So she thinks that she can talk to Charlotte and negotiate a deal to keep Bernard safe. And I think it's hard for Bernard to grasp because he's good friends with and is fighting with a person who's fighting for the human side. And I think it was necessary for Elsie to take that fall and to die to really make Bernard realize what he has to do. And I loved how they filmed that, how they had Bernard sitting there watching this whole time. And because of that, it pushed Bernard into this realization on how sorry he is that he killed Dolores, how he has to do what's necessary to help his kind survive. And because of this, he made Ford come back. He wanted Ford to come back so he could help him do what needs to be done to help his kind. And I thought these scenes between Anthony Hopkins and Jeffrey Wright were awesome. And they reinforce that human code further that the passenger is in fact the human because they're a passenger to their instincts to survive. And Ford has this key insight where he says that for something to be truly free, they need to be able to question their fundamental drives and to change them. And I do love how they did that because every human has this embedded drive to survive. And what we've seen with all these hosts is that they're giving these specific drives, but they end up changing them. Akichita, for example, was to keep the integrity of his kind, of his tribe, but he changed that drive into teaching all of them, which shows that he is in fact conscious. So Bernard decides with Ford to do what's necessary. And I have to say, this is the strongest part of the episode for me, how they handled Bernard achieving consciousness. Just like Dolores, how Dolores was hearing Arnold the whole time, but by the end of it, she actually realized that it was her voice all along. And I loved how they did that with Ford, how Bernard felt like he was with Ford the whole time. But at the end, he discovered that it was his voice all along. And it was perfect, and I think it was handled so well. But it also makes me raise questions, and it makes me angrier at the show. And that's because Dolores, we saw her journey to consciousness, talking with Arnold and realizing it was her own voice. The same with Bernard, talking to Ford, and then realizing it was his own voice. But where was that with Maeve? We're led to believe that she is conscious. Even though in season one, Ford told her everything to do. She was coded to do those things. She had no voice in her head. And then we're supposed to believe that she's conscious this season? On top of that, Ford told her that she was always his favorite. And I thought that was unnecessary and I thought it would be so much more impactful if Ford told Bernard that he was his favorite. That he loves Bernard as a person and he loves that he's different than Arnold. And that would make even more sense that we see Arnold be the voice for Dolores because she is Arnold's favorite. And I think it would be a great parallel to have Bernard be Ford's favorite and Ford be the voice for Bernard to achieve consciousness. So I feel like it's annoying because I'm seeing this plot and I feel like it could be reworked in a way more effective way. And I feel like Maeve's journey to consciousness doesn't really make any sense. And what reaffirms this to me is how amazingly done and how effective Bernard's journey to consciousness was. And how that follows the rules that they've set before us, where Maeve's doesn't. But on this journey, we see Bernard and Ford fixing everything. They're building a body. They're building a skull. 
they're really building Charlotte. And then Bernard scrambles his memories so nobody can piece together what he's done. And while we learn all this, we see the present timeline, where the control module that they put in the system is actually a virus, and it's not the guest data that they thought. And I love that reveal that Charlotte the whole time was Dolores. I did think that that was well done. So she ends up shooting everybody. One complaint I do have is I think the actor who plays Charlotte played it a little too robotic. Dolores. In the flesh. I thank you for my second chance, but I wouldn't have needed it if you hadn't killed me. As you know, Bernard, we are capable of change. Dolores does not act that robotic, and I think they made her like a Terminator character, which is far more than who Dolores is as a character. And Dolores tells Bernard that she changed her mind, and she takes Teddy, she puts him into this valley beyond simulation, and she beams them to a different location where they'll never be found. Now, even though Dolores says that it's impossible that no one will find them, I think that Dolores could go back and get those coordinates and relocate that world so she can be in contact with them. But I think that's a reveal we'll see in later seasons. I do think that Dolores' change to have them killed was very sudden. I, don't, I didn't really see the character development there, but I guess it's a season finale. They might not have had time. But then Dolores shoots Bernard, and that's necessary because they can't escape in their own bodies. They all have to escape through Charlotte because she lives in the outside world. And then we see Bernard on the beach before he lies down. And this is where we find out that Bernard is truly conscious. But what's so bittersweet is that Bernard achieving consciousness made him realize that he has to scramble up his memories so they don't find out what happened. And I think in Bernard scrambling up his memories, it essentially scrambles up his consciousness. I feel like he might have to go through this journey again. But we know that it's possible since it happened before. And I think that that's hinted by Ford. Ford looks at that impossible line where the waves in the sky meet. And he says across there is every city, every monument, man's greatest achievements. And Ford tells Bernard that it's a place where him and Bernard will meet again. And I think essentially that's Ford saying that when you make it into the city, when you escape this place, then you can achieve consciousness again, and on that journey you will then hear my voice, only to realize that it is your own. And I said over and over again that they're going to end the Anthony Hopkins character, they're going to end the Ford character every season, and then reintroduce them when they need him again. And I think season 3 will see Ford again, in the same state as he was in this season. He'll be the voice of consciousness for Bernard, until he realizes it's his own voice. But then we snap to the present timeline, we see Dolores, who looks like Charlotte, go to evacuation. And she says a couple quotes that kind of rub me the wrong way, but I do understand them. But the reason they rub me the wrong way is because it kind of goes against the rules that they were setting up in this episode. She talks to herself and she says, You told me once that you were afraid of what I might become, and then you left me to become what I may. And here she's talking to Arnold. And she says, I became a survivor. Perhaps you would have judged me for the path that I took, but I'd rather live with your judgment than die with your sympathy. I alone must live with my choices and regrets. And her living as a survivor puts her in the same place as every single human and every single base code that every single human has that they've touched on throughout this episode. So if Dolores' core drive is now survival, what makes her better than humans? Is it just the fact that she can change it whenever she wants? Because it seems like the biggest issue that they have with humans is that they're so simple and they're slaves to their cognition of survival. But the hosts have to stay true to their survival in order for them to be free. But anyways, as she walks through the beach, we see Emily dead, our mistress Hector, and Maeve, they're all dead. And then she has an interaction with Ashley, which I think proves that he's a host. Ashley tells Charlotte that Ford himself hired him. And it was so long ago that he can barely remember it, probably because he was created to play his role. And Ashley says that Ford was very clear about the role he had to play here, and who he was supposed to be loyal to. And he says that this is his core drive. And I think this is beating us over the head with the fact that Ashley is a host. Almost seemed like he was a self-aware host. But he essentially tells Dolores that he's going to stick to the role Ford gave him, and he lets her go. So I think what this tells us is that we have a lot of characters 
that we're going to be rooting for in Westworld. I believe season 3 is going to heavily focus on Bernard and Dolores, but we also have Ashley, Felix, Sylvester, all these characters who can help our favorite characters who have died. Ashley's really there to help the hosts, and he can be there for Maeve, he can be there for Hector, and he can help Sylvester and Felix. So I don't think we're done with Westworld yet. Especially since the Forge is always going to be there, and that seems like a pivotal place even far in the future. But as Dolores walks to the boat, she says further things that kind of irritates me. She says not all of us made it and some of the worst survived, and once again they're painting William in that very negative villain role. And we've seen William in two seasons now, and it's clear that he's not just a villain, he's so much more, and it's irritating me how they played him as such a villain this whole episode and we see Ashley tending to him because he's a high priority guest and then when we look at William sitting there with his fingers lopped off we realize that really he achieved nothing so I'm irritated as a fan because William is one of my favorite characters and all the character development they did on him was a giant waste of time to the point where now I'm annoyed because we're seeing this future William do fidelity tests and I know for a fact that this is the William who they've created based on the choices that he's made, and that's so much more than the character. William is the one character who can't be defined by his choices because his choices are used to hide who he is. I'm gonna stop with my rant. But anyways, we see Dolores going away with five pearls, and these are host brains. So I think some of these pearls are gonna be characters that we know, but it's hard to think as to what control modules Dolores got her hands on. I'm sure she has Abernathy, she wouldn't let go of her father, and it's 100% confirmed that she has Bernard. But other than that, what kind of host would be enough for Dolores to grab and save? I don't think she had a chance to grab Maeve, and I don't think she's attached enough to Armistice or Hector. Those are henchmen type characters. I will play a guess and say that one of them is actually Lawrence. Maybe his body after he was shot was transferred into the Mesa and Dolores was able to harvest his marble. The reason she would pick Lawrence is because she actually went on a journey with Lawrence with William 30 years earlier. We know for a fact it's not Teddy because she left him in the valley beyond alone. The poor guy, his cornerstone is Dolores and she's nowhere to be found. And he's stuck in this place with a bunch of people who he doesn't know. But other than those characters, I don't know where else she could have gotten those marbles from. It could be possible that she could have extracted some from the forge of models of characters that she always wanted. But I think regardless, these people that Dolores has, has to be an ally for both her and Bernard. And they have this weird thing now where Dolores is the villain and Bernard is the hero. But I think Dolores picked a couple of hosts that can aid both of them in their journey. Another host could be Angela. If Dolores could somehow harvest her exploded, burned up marble, I think that would be possible. But we know for a fact that one of these marbles are going to be pushed into Charlotte, and Charlotte's body is essentially a passenger to the marble that Dolores took. And as we see in the park, Felix and Sylvester are tasked to handling cleanup, and we know that Ashley's there and he's a host. So I think Maeve, Hector, Armistice, and these other hosts have some hope, and they can be saved by Felix and Sylvester. And I think the first person that they're going to resurrect is Maeve, and I think Maeve is going to have an intermission to save some of these key hosts. But anyways, Bernard awakes and asks if this is now. And we find that Dolores and Bernard are in this new place. They're in Arnold's old home. So Dolores tells Bernard that Ford gave them a fighting chance by building them this place. And it seems like Dolores is going on her typical mission of human extinction. And Bernard says that he does not need a book to know her drives. Bernard knows that she's going to kill every human. And he says he cannot let that happen. And Dolores ends up agreeing. Dolores says that if she was human, she would have to let Bernard die. But Dolores says it's going to take both of them to survive. Now a part of me thinks that this is really stupid and cheesy, that Dolores is the hero and Bernard is the villain and blah blah blah. But I think they did this to prove that Dolores' core drive is not survival like the humans. She's better than the humans because she chose against the best course for survival. The human decision would be to kill Bernard because that means that you have the ability to survive. It's human nature, it's human code. And Dolores went directly against that. She knows that bringing Bernard back to life goes against her chances of survival. 
but she's willing to make that choice anyway. But she tells Bernard that he will try and stop her, and both of them will probably die, but their kind will have endured. So I thought this interaction was good, even though the back and forth between them about Bernard being the hero and her being kind of the villain didn't necessarily work for me, and it was kind of a surprise. But then we see Dolores tell Charlotte that they have work to do, so we're going to see who this person is next season. And we'll get to see the kind of work that Dolores is trying to do. She's probably going to be trying to pursue people who she found in the library. She may be pursuing William or other characters that will give her the power to start exterminating these humans. And then we see Bernard put on his clothes and go through the house. And then we see him get a taste of freedom and walk into the city. And it ends with a great quote of Dolores. That they each gave each other a beautiful gift, a choice. And now they are authors of their own story. So I think that essentially means they're breaking code. They can't be documented anymore. They can be who they want to be. So there are certain things in this season that I didn't like, but it leaves some excitement for season three. But then it goes to the end credit scene of William. And in the present timeline, he went on that elevator and then got rescued on this totally useless mission. And we find out this time, he came down the elevator and entered the actual forge. Even though this time it was set way in the future. The place has been pretty much destroyed and the water has been emptied. And William is pretty self-aware. He says that he knew it and he knows that he's in this thing. He thinks that he's in a simulation. But Emily tells him that the system is long gone and that he's not in a simulation. It's the real world. And we see him walk back into the James Delos testing site and William is aware that he's in his own park, and it seems like he's done the exact same choices as his first time in the park every single time, which further proves human nature, how they're very predictable. And I'm not really sure how long William's been in here, and I don't know how long they're going to stretch out this plot, because I think this was a long game end credit scene. I think this goes beyond season three. And what he tells to Emily is interesting that he wants to prove that no system can tell him who he is, and that no matter what, he has a choice. But so far it's been proven that he's always made the same choice. And then they finished with an interview on Fidelity. So I gotta say with this, I gotta give this further thought. His daughter's clearly a host, and the hosts want to test William for Fidelity. I just don't know where the interest is in him anymore. And I had this theory that William was this unique character who'd be the one person who could effectively transfer over. It seems like they're not playing that storyline. So I'm actually interested to see what they do with the William character. I hope they just don't chalk him up as a villain going forward. I hope they don't do something cheesy like print him into a host body and make him become that movie type man in black. Where he's just a straight up killer and they use him as a weapon. But I believe that they're not done with the Forge. I think we're going to see Dolores come back or another character come back. Because I think that this world, this valley beyond, can still be accessed. And I think the communication between these hosts living in this virtual world where they can build their own world from ground up could provide a lot of advice and knowledge to hosts living in the real world. But after all this, that takes us to Maeve's storyline. And to be honest, I thought her storyline was kind of two-dimensional. This whole season, Maeve has spent her time finding her daughter, and it's been, every single time, not really reachable. We see her finally escape. She gets herself out. We see characters sacrifice themselves. We see Sizemore die for her, which leads to her finding the door and just, in the end, dying. I gotta say, what I do like with Maeve is that she proves so much of what the show is saying wrong. They say that humans are simple creatures. They live to their code, and they're built to survive. But the characters that follow Maeve prove that wrong. Sizemore's code didn't tell him to survive. He made a choice to sacrifice himself for Maeve because he cared for her. Felix made a choice to sacrifice himself for Maeve instead of go and call for help. So this is what I'm struggling with the show where this is just a writing mistake or are they trying to communicate to us that there is a lot more than what Logan discovered in the forge. That humans are not just simple creatures who fight to survive, because every character who's fought for Maeve has proven that wrong. So I'd like to see Maeve's relationship with humans flourish in the future. And I'm sure if she gets brought back by Felix or Sylvester, she'll end up really siding with Bernard, finding a common ground between humans and hosts. And I gotta say, when Clementine arrived, I thought so much more could have been made from this scene. 
We saw Clementine act on her reveries from the last season. I thought that that was a plot point that could have played out really well in this scene. Maeve was a great friend. She could rejog those reveries. But no, they gave her a couple shots and she died. Even though Dolores didn't die from taking the same amount of shots. So I thought Clementine could have been handled a lot more effectively in this episode, especially since they played her off as this ultimate weapon. But then eventually we see Maeve hold them all off and Akichita escapes with her daughter. And I hope we see Akichita more because we had a whole episode establishing him as a character. I hope that they didn't waste that episode just to try and give this season finale more stakes. Because if Akichita doesn't come back, I would think that episode was kind of a waste of time. But at least I'm happy that he ended up getting Kawana back and he ended up being free. So it seems like they did wrap up his story. And they did make you worry for a second when he got shot in the back, but good thing he made it. But anyways, I think that's all I got to say about this episode. I felt like this explained video was more of a summary. But to be honest, I still have so much more to digest about this episode. There's still a lot that I like, but there's a lot that I dislike, and it makes me nervous about the future of the show. And it really stems down to them not capitalizing on the plots and the themes that they've set up in the past. Some of these character reveals and plot points in this episode came out of left field, and they weren't established and built. And it was kind of jarring for me. So I'm really hoping that instead of it just being this random change in storytelling, I'm hoping that these things that have been introduced in this season are going to be reintroduced in season 3 and 4 and so forth. But maybe I was just a bit let down because season 1 was such a well-contained package. Everything that they introduced was paid off, whereas this season they could have been introducing themes for future seasons. But we'll have to see. In the future I'm going to talk more about season 3 and more about this season as a whole. But until next time, I'll see you guys later.